All right. Hi, everybody. Um, today we're talking about Vivarium, a 2019 film directed by Lorcan Finnegan. Um, so this is a film about a young couple that is looking for a new home and they end up getting trapped in this suburban housing development that is revealed to be an unescapable trap. Um, so a little bit more about the plot before we get started. Um, Essentially, like I said, the, the, this couple is looking for a new home. They get dropped off in this place. The realtor leaves and they can't find their way out no matter what. And eventually, a, I think the next morning, a little like a baby boy is dropped off and they are told that if they raise it and they take care of it, they will be set free. Um, so eventually, the husband, um, <laughs> Tom... Uh, played by Jesse Eisenberg, starts digging this hole in the ground in hopes of finding a way out. It very uh, quickly becomes apparent to the audience that this hole was not going to do anything, and Tom ends up dying um, digging this hole. Spoiler and, alert! Yes, spoiler alert. Um, then Gemma, played by Imogene Poots, um, tries to kill this son that she has helped raise it turns out well um the son is like an alien kind of thing and it's growing at a very very fast pace so now her son is a grown man and um this attempt to kill him is completely unsuccessful and <laughs> she ends up dying um maybe it, it's unclear the time the the i'd say the the time line um so she ends up dying very soon after that and neither of them escape and this son alien thing that they have helped raise um returns to the realtor uh the real um where they event where they first found this home and he takes over from there and we see a new young couple come into this realtor office and meet their son and so the process the cycle continues um but yeah that's that's the plot that's the spoiler i guess late spoiler alert <laughs> there you go sorry for anyone who hasn't seen it yet yeah who hasn't seen it is the whole this plot. Video, like, yeah there. that's it well, now i know <laughs> <laughs> you just told me the whole but, like, plot okay but here's the thing if you haven't seen this film if you have no desire to see this film you're probably gonna want to know what's going down so you know That's what we're talking fair. about anyways I'm gotta honest, defend here. myself huh i would rather just listen to this whole plot than watch the film I was okay like, Ooh, yeah tell us more tell us more. tell us more come on ethan ethan talking to your mic okay. is it quiet yeah a little bit yeah ah <laughs> uh, <laughs> do all this okay is this better not really it's enough. <laughs> it's like right here. Is this better? <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, it's better. Yeah, that's, that's great. Uh, that's really good. Really okay. enjoyable. Let me what I said here. Let me think about what I was saying. Give me like three seconds. <clears throat> All right. I'm going to be honest here. I would rather have listened to that plot than watch the movie or watch and the why film. Is that, it was Ethan? very dry and not that entertaining. And I was kind of confused the whole time. And, like, they answered, like, the big questions at the end. But they didn't answer, like, all the questions. Like, what's going I still don't really know what was going on. And I feel like the movie didn't clarify a lot. I think it would have been better if there was some overall reason as to, like, why they were doing it. Because yeah. there wasn't. Like, it's an interesting plot as in, like, you're taking these people, you're keeping them here, you're, you're having them raise like, a kid so that he can be the next, like, realtor in the system, and, like, it keeps going forever and ever, because the parents never get released, they inevitably die. But there was no reason for it. It just seems like they wanted to be doing it. If there was some overarching thing, like, we need to do this to, like, keep our species alive, I don't know. <laughs> or, like, I don't know, I'm trying to think of, like, a better reason, and I can't. Right. Maybe that's okay. how they felt. <laughs> So I actually quite enjoyed this movie. I think there was definitely some problems with um, the the script and some of the acting was a little off. But yeah. I think 
actually, <laughs> um, <laughs> I, I, I think that the sort of pointlessness and the unanswered questions was part of it. Because I think the film is undoubtedly an allegory for, I, I mean, it, it, they don't do a very good job of hiding this allegory. Like, it's very, very, very apparent. But um, it, it's it's trying to prove to us how meaningless these suburban lives we lead are, right? Like, um, uh, like how sort of pointless and mundane and upsetting the nuclear family can be. And so I think the fact that they left a lot of these questions unanswered, like who had imprisoned these people and, you know, what was the point of the imprisonment works with the point of this film, that a lot of the sort of white suburban lives we lead in the West, I think most specifically the United States and the UK tend to be like void and empty, but yeah. I have to agree with Flora. I did enjoy this film. Um, I wouldn't say I was scared. I know this, you know, in some sense is classified as a horror. Um, I think the word I'm looking for is concerned. Disturbed, maybe? <laughs> disturbed and concerned. Um, I, I wasn't as much scared as I was disturbed. I think I had my mouth open about 50% of the way through, like, yeah. the entire movie. <laughs> um, it, it just seems so chaotic, and I couldn't, I couldn't really tell if we were in an alternate universe or if this was, like, the real world, um, you know, like, further adding on to the context of why is this happening? And that piece for me was a big miss. Um, but I guess it's almost better to wonder than to do what they did with some other elements in this film. Um, and, you know, kind of showed this, like pulled off this show, don't tell piece. So, you know, we could have easily had a monologue about why everything happens um, for whatever reason. Um, but it's almost better, in my opinion, to wonder than to have that added negative part to it. Um, because there was quite a bit of show don't tell in this particular film. Right. Well, in that they did not do that correctly, that they right. told us <laughs> instead of, uh, instead of showing this. Yeah. Oh! Hi, welcome to Tech Corner, where we talk about tech things in the movies. <laughs> Excellent. Anyways, let's start off with uh, scenic design slash set design, because I know that Nicole wanted to talk about that. There she goes. Bom, There's bom, so bom, much bom. green. Bom, 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 bom. <laughs> and it makes me so happy. Um, and it's interesting, this kind of... Sweet I Nicole's wrote, in the St. Patrick's Day spirit. She's in I, that green mood. I wrote all my notes in green. That was actually coincidental. Um, you know, yeah, it's St. Patrick's Day. I feel like this is a very St. Patrick's Day movie in some backwards. <laughs> in, the, in the way that it shares the same color scheme. Yeah, in that in that one way. <laughs> no, 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 no. I mean in the way that um, two, like a young couple raises a little boy and then tries to kill him. That... <laughs> Yeah, okay. Are we talking about Angela's ashes here? What are we talking about? <laughs> um, but um, color was really interesting in this film. Um, and something about green is generally associated with energy and liveliness. Um, but they somehow managed to make it look dull at the same time. Um, yeah. We were talking briefly before about the meaning of Vivarium, um, and who has a definition for that? Like in a flora. I have it. I don't have it written down, but I remember what it means. So I have a tendency to ruin movies for myself. Um, this obviously no different. So before I even watched it, I looked up what Vivarium is. What a Vivarium is because it's a weird name. So um, a Vivarium is. A um, enclosure that is meant to look like its inhabitants' natural habitat, but it's man-made, and it's made for the purposes of studying. Um, so, I mean, that kind of gives away that kind of gives away the whole movie that this uh, suburb is not what it seems, um, and that it is made to 
to look, um, it is made to look like what would be the nuclear family's natural habitat, um, but it is a trap. Yeah. And for any of you Latin scholars out there, um, if you look at roots um, and whatnot, um, Arium, Arium is kind of like, you know, a space. Um, Wewum, Wewa is to live. So, um, you know, it alludes to what happens in act two of this film. Um, and it's interesting to consider, um, like, we're basically looking into this little world um, that was built to, I, I want to say like fake out these people, you know, like when an animal goes into a vivarium, you know, it's kind of like faked out. It thinks it's its habitat, but it's really not. It's just built to look like it. Something about this um, habitat that um, Gemma and Tom are shipped off to seems very fake. Um, Which seems is so very scary when you think about it for like actual yeah. animals that they're living yeah. in. I know. I have activity in spaces they think is a wild, but people are observing their every move. I have tried to rationalize zoos to myself for such a long time you just can. because I loved going to them when I was a child. Um, but after watching this movie, I was like, nope, uh-uh. nope, 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 nope. It's bad. <laughs> it cannot be excused. Only ethical things are when animals can't go back into the wild, they'll die. Yeah, exactly. When you have a habitat for them. Mm -hmm. So... Technically, you could have an ethical zoo, but those are usually called, like, anal... anal not anus. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go again! <laughs> Every time. Oh, I love how you go to the one school that Freud visited in the United States, because he loved that. <laughs> he would absolutely adore okay. it. Nicole, since you're editing, you're cutting that out. I don't think she is. I don't think I am. <laughs> In like animal enclosures, they, they're most called like animal sanctuaries where they have yeah. other animals there. Yeah. Also, I wanted to say that we talked about how the color green is associated with liveliness and other things. I wanted to say that it can also be associated with wealth. Wealth. Well, mm. oh. it can be associated with wealth and with illness as well, which I also think both tie into the film. Right. There's also the element, um, you know how there's that weird internet debate about like which color is each subject, but green yes. is almost unanimously Always science. Yeah, uh, science. associated with science. So there's that too. For, for the illness part of it, I thought of obviously Tom dying and then her eventually dying. And when he's digging the hole, it's not actual dirt. It has clumps of yellow muck in it. Yeah, and it's like clay. Uh, but think of what that is and like how it made him sick and how it, she eventually died as well. Like, it, I don't know if it was radioactive material. I don't think it was anything in the dirt that actually made him sick. I think it was just physical excursion. Just like, you know, for exertion. like day, exertion, excursion, <laughs> exertion. Hey, ma'am, we all, we all have. Same difference. Yes, yeah, same difference. Um, um, I think. It, it was just a lot of tedious labor um, that eventually killed him. I want to think that, but then I also think that he was breathing in so That's much. That's true. You're right. right. I didn't even consider that. Yeah. In the hole, and then he was having trouble breathing, so that's what makes me think it had something to do with his lungs. But mm -hmm. since he never had a mask or anything... But I, I don't know. I, I think it could be all the dirt, but I, I, I question what the yellow stuff was. Because right. they don't give us an explanation yeah. for that, so I, I have to think it has something to do with his death. Speaking of the yellow stuff, I um, getting back to the set, th that was kind of a common theme in this film, where a lot of the set pieces felt a little play doughy, like they just felt like goopy? I don't know how yeah. else to describe it. Like, there was this one uh, moment where um, Tom throws down a cigarette, and there's, like, this um, stop motion of the grass kind of scuttling away yes. from where the um, cigarette landed. And it that looked really cool. cool. I, I, I like that. I, I then... loved it, but it was, like, it looked like stop motion, and the movie's obviously not a stop motion. Exactly. But it was just that little piece, and it's never explained. 
I I quite enjoyed it. I thought I, it was, I liked it. I, yeah. Sorry, I don't mean to cut you off. No, no, no. no it's okay. <laughs> I liked it. I just didn't know what the explanation. Yeah, it felt was. random, it, but like yeah. it was cool. Yeah, I it think cool. it was meant to be like, oh, have we crossed into this weird alternate dimension? Like things are not in their control. I don't know. But um, mm-hmm. there was also the moment when she, after Tom dies, she tries to kill um, her son, this, this well, alien he's not thing that son. she's well, raised. He's not her son. Uh, yeah, her son. Not the boy. Thing. Mother. Yeah, I'm um, not your mother. <laughs> um, not your mom, dude. And um, he sort of gets down on all fours and, like, lifts up the curbside and scuttles into it, into this, like, weird Dr. Seussian alternate dimension where this house that they had, um, that they had been living in was sort of turned all upside down and sideways. And you see all of these different families, all of these sort of uh, nuclear families occupying um, in this alternate dimension, yeah, in this house, and you see all of the different variations of this, or maybe it's um, all things that happened in the past, but it could be things happening um, simultaneously, yeah. right? Like uh, in sort of parallel universes. Um, but that that was really cool. I, I liked the whole sort of mishmashed. Um, I I really for like set slash CGI. I thought that the well, first of all, I thought the pulling up the curb and going under it was super cool. And I think mm-hmm. that it was executed very well. Mm-hmm. And I think that the house that was all slanted, almost like a clown fun mm-hmm. house, mm-hmm. but also just like all warped. Yeah. Very well done as well. It reminds me yeah. of, uh, if, if, if our viewers want to reference our previous episodes, it reminds <laughs> me of the clown spaceship on Killer Clowns from Outer Space. Mm, yes. Where there's just weirdly shaped doors and they're everywhere and they leave different places every time. Just right. a, an impossible element to a f- whimsical, fantastical house. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I really like the uh, the clouds. I don't know why. I thought the clouds were really fun. I like, like also kind of like, I thought they were kind of like Dr. Seuss kind of clouds. I kind of thought like truffle trees from uh, yeah. Lorax. Right. Yeah. Those are fun. I like those. The favorite this, part of that. With the CG, I, th- I think. Yeah, right? Yeah, 100%. Yeah. I, I also really enjoyed... Um, the the you know seeing kind of the bird's eye view of all the houses um especially when they wrote like help like, yeah fuck you <laughs> at the yeah. top of the room <laughs> that was funny yeah. that was pretty cool um it it may have you ever seen kind of like those tables that they have for children with like the little roads and then like, you know, kind of the houses. Like a train set, right? Yeah. Where, where they like yeah, like sort of expand. Table. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's what it felt like. You were looking kind of over mm-hmm. this giant table of sorts. Um, it, for whatever reason, felt very minuscule. It just felt like a piece to a game or something and i don't know really how much more to verbalize that Mm -hmm. um but that's kind of what i got the feeling it was very reminiscent of like my childhood (laughs) me and my brother would always play on those little activity tables um yeah but yeah yeah i thought that was pretty pretty neat neato there wasn't a lot of sfx in this movie but i thought that the one or some of the instances where they did use it was really cool. Specifically, when the boy, or when when Gemma and the boy are playing a game, and she's trying to get him to tell her who he's seen because she knows he's seeing other people, other creatures. She knows he goes off and leaves, and so she goes, "Can you imitate who you saw today?" And he starts making an ungodly screeching sound, and he, like, his bubbles kind of come from his neck, almost like gills but like blown up i don't know what you would call them just mon- like monstrous. A bullfrog like like, a like bullfrog. you know how a bullfrog but it's like like two or three of them all yes. over his neck but they're yes. big and gross um yeah. so my yeah. neck feels weird now <laughs> <laughs> and <laughs> as much as people might not, not like this movie or think maybe it could have done better in some ways they did well in the sfx area because they looked very real and i don't know if they use cgi over that but i know that part of it had to be sfx and for that i give them props because sfx is very easy to make mess up and i mean i think we've all seen like cheesy horror movie deaths and stuff like that i just 
it was, it was good. <laughs> yeah, I feel like with this movie, like, there's nothing technically, like, wrong with it, like, in terms of, like, the visual effects. I think, obviously, they weren't the most realistic visual effects, but I think that was done intentionally. Like, I think they stylistically chose kind of a very, pla- like, plasticky or play doh feel. And I, I thought, like, the visual effects looked good. Like, I, like, didn't yeah. have any issues with them. But, yeah. I think that they certainly didn't have... I think some of the movies we've talked about are bad because of low budget, or that's what is implied. I don't think this one had the same case because their their budget seems to be good for all of the visual effects they did. I just think that they kind of messed up on the writing and the plot. <laughs> yeah. And maybe the acting a little bit. <laughs> Let's talk about that. Um, why Jesse Eisenberg? Why? Such a good question. <laughs> why? And why does Flora have a thing for picking movies with Jesse Eisenberg in them? That's also a very good question. <laughs> Jesse Eisenberg absolutely does not belong in this movie. I can't look yeah. at him without associating him with, like, Mark Zuckerberg. When I see him, exactly. I see Mark Zuckerberg. Yeah. <laughs> Mark Zuckerberg should not be in this movie. He just reminds um, me of, like, a knockoff Michael Sarah. Like, he's not yeah. Michael Sarah. He's like, yeah. he's like, Michael Sarah is from Target. And he is from Walmart. 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 He yeah. is from Shaw's. Shaw's. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Right. It, it didn't. It just didn't feel right. It doesn't feel right because that's not the kind of role where you. I mean, it has to do with typecasting, where it's not the type of role we you see an actor in and we get surprised. But then there's also there are so many actors and actresses where we'll see them in a role that's not typical to what they usually do, and we'll say, oh, they were really good in that. I didn't feel that way with him in this movie. Like Denzel Washington in Flight. Yeah. Yeah. I, um... Yeah, I think I think he was a weird choice. He is a strange... Like, he's supposed to be representative of, like, this this nuclear family dad, right? I think that but that's what, not. but he's not like, he's Jesse Eisenberg. He doesn't Maybe. represent that in any way. He's just a dork. Like he's a, he's a weirdo. I also um, thought it was, oh, sorry. I also thought it was odd because I, I don't know. When I think of like a suburban family, I think of older parents than that. And I think that kind of messed me up a little bit too. Yeah, I, think, I agree. Or at least an older father from what we usually see in like Hollywood films. So like seeing him as like a dad it or like supposedly a dad it didn't make sense to me yeah because he he doesn't he's not even old enough to be that in like a movie setting unless you're talking about like super young parents which i don't think it was going for and even imogen poots didn't feel right for this role either but i wish we had more of a backstory to kind of their development as a couple um it felt very random i don't know why nothing ever feels like it clicks between them even though it's clear that they're in love just it didn't feel it just didn't feel right Um, i and i don't know i don't know why no i understand that yeah sorry do you have anything else to add no you go (laughs) okay i agree i don't think the two actors had a lot of chemistry and i think Mm -hmm. imogen or imogen i don't know how to pronounce her name um I think she was overacting a lot. Like, she, there was a lot of moments where she was just kind of scream sobbing, and we got that, like, over and over and over again. Yeah. It's like, I mean, it's undoubtedly a traumatic experience to be a part of, but it was like, okay, <laughs> yeah, this does suck. You're right. <laughs> um, it just, I don't know. There doesn't, didn't seem to be a lot of variation in her performance. And then, as you said, um, we didn't get any background on these characters at all. We know um, Tom is a um, gardener, and we know uh, Gemma is a like elementary school teacher. And that's about mm-hmm. it. The 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 best role that was filled, in my opinion, was the young the young boy. He did a good job. That little boy is incredible. I think it's, I mean, it's hard to, the way that they manipulated his voice, I mean, I think they just inserted voices, but they had him mouth the words on, on, like, on the beats. Mm -hmm. So he had to do that, like, with the expression, and he did it well. It was so ridiculously realistic. Yeah. Especially because he's, like, he's a little kid. Right. And you don't expect little kids to be able to do that. 
to say that like a seven year old was the best actor in a movie is odd. Yeah. For like a horror movie slash thriller, like I think there were very stereotypical things you do to alter people's voices, but this film did something completely different than that. And I really, really like that. Like I I think honestly his voice w- was part of the effect. Like that's what made this film scary at all, or that's what made this film discomforting. Like, I don't think I was scared, but I definitely felt like tension throughout the whole film. Yeah. I felt uncomfortable like the whole entire time. Um, and I don't think that could have been achieved as well without the voice alteration on the little kid. Cause like, I don't even know how to describe it. Like they simultaneously made it higher and lower. It was so weird. Yeah. Um, I think it's very interesting as well from to go off of what you're saying because in other horror movies especially if like someone's possessed they'll take the actor's voice and just like distort it so it sounds satanic Mm -hmm. and then like that's all they do but for this particular instance he not only had to distort his own voice but had to mimic other people which meant that they had to like insert that themselves and he had to mouth the words which i just find really impressive but also a really cool concept a movie instead of just distorting the own one person's voice he was like a parrot i'd say there are so many disturbing elements of this film uh ranging from how the kid uh how the boy screams when he needs to be fed and it's like an ear ear blast ear blasting i don't know (laughs) what's the word ear drum blast ear breaking ear bursting ear drum bursting ear bursting yeah ear bursting sound ear drum bursting sound um but I, and so that's obviously very scary, as well as when he distorts, distorts his voice, it's very disturbing. But I'd say the most disturbing element of the film is how they allude to how he's always watching them. Yep. So that kind of ties into the vivarium aspect of it. They're being observed by the child, by the boy, and everything that they do. I think that's especially exemplified when they are having <laughs> sex and he... Yeah, that was so uncomfortable. He's shown at three ages throughout the film. Baby, like a seven-year-old boy, and like a teenager. So when he's like a seven-year-old boy, he's shown at the door watching the two of them have sex. Emotionally. Yeah. And then... That was very disturbing to to me. And then as Gemma falls through, you know, the kind of like three houses or three levels or whatever, she sees a couple in bed having sex and then the boy standing at the door clapping clapping to the beat (laughs) yeah yeah (laughs) um that was very disturbing um Um, i i like to think that he was the metronome (laughs) (laughs) how did they not know he was there he was keeping the beat for them (laughs) i would assume i think i think we were supposed to get that this has happened like they've been stuck there for so long (laughs) they were just like whatever (laughs) Um, they're like "Eh, he can stay (laughs) <laughs> yeah, I mean, he's not a real person. Or, yeah, um, But that's so disturbing to have someone who thinks of you as parents. Mm. Oh, yeah, it was really upsetting. It was, it, was, really it was upsetting and disturbing more than anything else in the film to me. Yeah. More, than, more than the death, more than anything else, was seeing this weird, almost incestuous Ugh, yeah. exchange. I didn't like it. Yeah. I think the, the chewing was also disturbing. Now, yeah. I have misophonia, so that might be, like, a me thing, but something about adding kind of this really over-chewing... Of the close-up I- shots to the mouth. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it Love was... The food in the- yeah. Disturbing. Again, kind of alluding to this, we're always watching you no matter what you do. Same with... Right, you know, very close. Kind of this camera looking into the room when they're having sex. It's somewhat of, like, a voyeuristic peek- peeping Tom type deal right sleeping is tom going to the bathroom (laughs) looking in the mirror brushing their teeth right you're so right because the uh camera was like where the mirror was so it it was like as if kind of a um truman show type situation where there was the mirror in his Mm -hmm. uh, the camera was in his mirror yeah it's interesting Mm -hmm. so this is a total aside um but something that really annoyed me um was like we never really were shown how they were delivered. That's what I wanted. The essentials they needed. Um, 
Yeah, also, that made me angry. I wanted to know. Tom was I know. always... See, he always had cigarettes on him. Yeah, yeah I know. Like, I you would think too. that's not essential. Well, yeah. I mean, at first, I thought that they he had, like, had a pack, and then he was, like, using them when they got there, but then it was, like, years later. Yeah. So, I don't... Yeah. See, here's the thing. I don't think they were there for years. I, although, I guess they could have been. I thought time was just warped in a really weird way, where the boy was yeah. growing super fast. Because when we saw him... Like, from when he was a baby to when he looked about eight years old, mm -hmm. only, like, 99 days had passed. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, so I it's don't... probably, like, about a year then. Yeah, it was probably all in all about a year. Yeah. The perception of didn't... time... I, 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 did, really I did remember that. I just didn't know how to, like, yeah. Yeah. say it, but... I but still, still you think it, it was yeah. still an amount of time yeah. where you think yeah. one box of cigarettes wouldn't last. Yeah. So... Yeah. I think the element of time in this film as well like how how it's warped is supposed mm -hmm. to be um like you know how you always hear older people saying i can't believe that was like 10 years ago it felt like yesterday you know mm -hmm. um I, I guess i say that sometimes but um i guess <laughs> maybe it's just a commentary on how you know we view time stuck in the suburbs perhaps yeah I want to say Tom. Tom? Tom the cigarettes. Black Fives. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Not only that, I don't know. How he presents himself before he is in this trap. Like, when he's That's living true. in normal society, he seems kind of Clark-esque. Mm -hmm. Like, he's working a, a gardening job to eventually get to the job he wants. I think that was think. what it was. Yeah. And he has a school teacher, GF. I don't know, Cur curly curly hair gamer boy, GF, <laughs> school teacher, Ha! alt GF. Ethan, um, are you a gamer boy? I'm not, unfortunately. Damn it! Sorry, That's <laughs> actually really rude Sorry. of you so to close. not fit into that stereotype. <laughs> hey. <laughs> Just say. Hey. Um, yeah, yeah, I think it's really hard to point out the Clarky here. I agree with you guys. Yeah. We'll say Tom. Tom's Tom. our Clarky for this Tom's episode. Our Go for it. And then, how much money would we pay? I'd pay three bucks to watch this movie. I genuinely, like, besides the pretty glaring faults, I really liked it. I thought it was very interesting. I would pay the, f the free that it was on Amazon That's Prime fair. Video. I don't know. It just kind of, I, I don't necessarily love to consume disturbing media. And it was very disturbing, so it's not something that I would, like, enjoy to watch by myself mm -hmm. that's just me yeah, I would, so i wouldn't pay I would for it like a solid four four cents probably <laughs> four dollars and four cents or just four no, cents no, four four cents flat zero okay. dollars four four spare pennies like you pick you pick around. it up at like a garage sale find, and you're like just find change in the ground and throw it at it <laughs> um i don't know i'm kind of hung up on this um i probably would agree with Flora. Um, I really love movies um, with that disturbance factor where you watch them and you're like, what the fuck just happened after you get out of the movie? Yeah. Um, like, like similar to that of The Shining, that's kind of where, where I like started my enjoyment of this kind of disturbing hmm. um, factor. Um, but it's it's psychological in a sense and it messes with you and it kind of makes you think about how we live you know not not to get like deep or anything um like a kind of society <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah um i think that's kind of the only piece i enjoyed um other than that the yeah so i would go 250 maybe like three bucks yeah Fair enough. Mm -hmm. All right. That, <laughs> that, that concludes our episode of $5 Movie Bin for this week, Yay. slash whenever we film the next one. <laughs> Make sure to like and subscribe and leave a comment if you please. C can be negative feedback, but just don't direct it at Flora or else she will be upset. I know you I can, talk too much, but the you three gotta of us. ignore it. <laughs> Flora, but, but don't make it clear that you're leaving her out of it. Oh, I'm specific about how you commented.
Yeah. Yeah. Uh huh. There you go. All right. Thank you guys for being so patient with us as we kind of move it back into we're we're all back at college now. Yay. Um, so, you know, it's just a matter of figuring out our schedules and once we kind of get going, we'll, we'll get a, we'll get a routine going and these are only going to get better and better. And, um, we have a little, little surprise coming soon. We do. We do. We do. (laughs) Um, Flora. I'm loving it. Wouldst thou like to live deliciously? (laughs) Wouldst thou like a taste of butter? A pretty dress? Wouldst thou like to live deliciously? Wouldst thou like to see the world? Why did you memorize this?